Bayes' theorem is an important tool for drawing conclusions from statistics. Now, I've set up a typical storyline here. Uh, suppose that the, there's a disease, you can name whatever disease you like, uh, that is possessed in 1% of the population. Now, there's a screening test available for this, which will uh, accurately detect it in 90% of the people that actually have the disease. But the test also has what's known as false positives here. Uh, namely, uh, it will indicate that 15% of the people who do not have the disease actually have it. Now, the situation that a person is faced with is supposing they take this test and it tests positive. We want to know what's the probability that they actually have the disease. Now, uh, let's set up some notation of some events here so we can simplify the writing of the expression of these ideas. So let's say that uh, D is the event that a person has the disease. And let uh, T designate that the uh, test is positive. Now, with this notation, uh, what are our assumptions up here? Well, the first one says that the probability or the proportion of the population that has a disease is 1%. Okay. Uh, the second one is a conditional probability. Namely, it looks at the proportion of the population that has the disease and says that the test will be positive in 90% of those cases. And the false positive condition is also a uh, conditional probability. And it's looking at the case where people do not have the disease and yet the test will be positive in 15% uh, of those cases. And the question that we're interested in here is, if the test is positive, then what's the probability that a person actually has the disease? In other words, we're interested in this conditional probability. Let's look at the various cases here. All right, so what kind of cases can we have? Well, of course, a person could have the disease. And test positive. Now, in that case, uh, we would designate that is they are going to be just the event that says D intersect T. All right, with another case. Well, a person could have the disease and uh, not test positive, test negative. It's a complement of testing positive. Okay, what event would that be? That would be D and the complement of T. And of course, then there's, they could not have the disease, not disease, and they could test positive. That's the false positive uh, uh, situation there. So that would be not having the disease and testing positive. And finally, there's the situation that they could not have the disease and test negative. OK, that they do not have the disease and that's negative. So we've broken this down into four possible events and four possible cases. We know the probabilities, uh, some conditional probabilities. Uh, when we've seen a breakdown of cases like this before, what kind of uh, uh, situation have we had? Well, if we have designated these events here as what happens along the branches of a tree. Now, how do we set up this tree? If we set up a tree, like such, how do we label the different parts? Well, if we notice that conditional probabilities always went along the secondary branches, 
we only had one number here, the 1%, that indicates that this should be along a primary branch. So if we designate this by disease, and here is the complement of that set, then we can split this off. Here is T and not T, T and not T. And we know some probabilities that, that we're given here. So what are the probabilities that we are given? Well, we're given the 1% along this one branch. Here's a conditional probability. Given T, the probability of testing positive was going to be 90%. And this one here said, given you did not have the disease, there was a 15% chance you would also test positive. Now, we could actually fill in the uh, numbers along the other branches if we like, because we know that uh, uh, these have to add up to uh, 1 here, 99% here, 10% uh, here, 85% along here. Those are going to be the uh, probabilities along all the other branches. Now, and what are the cases that we have come up with? Well, the probability in case, if we number these here, if this is case 1, the probability of case 1 is exactly going to be along the first branch. The probability in case two would be along the second branch. The probability of case three, the third, and the probability along the fourth branch would be case four. Okay, now let's take a look at what we're actually trying to find here. So we basically know how to find these probabilities here. Well, which ones do we need? Well we want to find the probability that a person has the disease given they test positive. Okay, so what does that mean? Remember the definition of conditional probability says this is the probability, the joint probability, D and T, divided by the probability of T. All right, well we know how to find the numerator of this, that's just going to be the product along this top branch. 0.01 times 0.9, uh, which is going to be equal to uh, moving some decimal places, 0.009. So that gives us a numerator there. Well, what about the uh, denominator? Well, let's take a look at this. We want to find the probability that a person is going to test positive. Well, how can you test positive? Well, there is a, let me get another color here. You can test positive there, or you can test positive here. So the two ways of test positive would be in case one plus case three. All right, and we already know the probability in case one. That was 0 0.009. And what about case three? Well, we have to multiply 0.99 times 0.15, grab a calculator here and find out that that's going to be equal to 0.14, a little less than 0 0.15, 1485, okay. So what is the probability a person is going to test positive? Well, we need to add these two numbers, so that's 0.15, 7, 5, All right, and that becomes our denominator here. All right, so when we then divide these two fractions, you have to grab a calculator to do that, it, it comes out to be 0 0.062. Okay, so what have we actually seen here? Well, what we've seen is that the probability of having the disease is a little more than 6%. And one way to view this is that you've got some additional information here. So the general population had a 1% chance of having the disease. Because the person tested positive for the disease here, then that moves up a little bit the probability that they had the disease. And of course, all these numbers will depend upon choices, the, the three values here, uh, the incidence in the population, uh, how accurate the test is, and what kind of false positives there are. 
okay we'll look later at a another approach to the same problem